Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Good evening, everybody in YouTube land. Welcome to TFYLP. Tonight is July 18th, although when you're watching this, who knows, because this was a pre-recorded episode, because Phil doesn't know how to work technology. Uh, tonight, I am joined by Rick. Hi! And Hi, also, Phil. people to Hi. be named later. We, we should have people jumping in later. So, um, yeah, let's hope that uh, pans out there. Uh, so, yeah, as uh, we get into the night here, we'll have some more folks, so you're not just staring at R2, uh, uh, at least one ugly mug. I don't know how Rick wants to describe his face, but I'm, I'm not complimentary myself. Uh, but um, yeah, we're going to talk some Transformers. And uh, hey, if you like us, uh, hit the like button. If you want other people to know about us, uh, then then tell them about us. And then, uh, you know, click the, the follow as well, because it, it helps us out and all that stuff. Join so, our Patreon, where we have pictures of all our feet. Yeah. Um, not mine yet. I'm still waiting for the studio to come back with my photos, but uh, you know, it's we'll deal with that later. Um, so, um, Rick, are those frames behind you? Are you being framed right now? Yes, I am sitting in the world famous frame and picture shop, and behind me are frame samples. And uh, the frame shop is actually located right next to Has Been Toys and Collectible Comics. Has Been Collectible Toys and Comics, rather, which I also own. I was not prepared for, all right, so three, four months ago, I opened a comic book and toy shop, and I thought, all right, that'll be a nice, you know, supplement to the frame shop. I was not prepared emotionally or physically for the toy and comic shop to be my main gig, and the frame shop, which has existed for 40 years, to become my side gig. Like, I wasn't ready for that at all. Like, I didn't think that was going to, like... Like, I wasn't ready for that. Like, the in the last four months, I've made more on the toy and comic side than the whole frame shop has year to date. That, That's not too shabby. No, I know it sounds like I'm complaining. I'm not. I just... Boy, I was not prepared for that transition. I was well, not. I mean, I was not prepared. I've for seen that. your post. For those people who aren't following Hasbro Toys on social media, I recommend following it because you you got a lot of cool stuff in there, dude. I have been very lucky that uh, a because people know me, but b. Uh, it seems like this is an area where people have a lot of stuff in their attics and basements. And in the last two weeks, I've gotten uh, comic books from the late 1930s. I've gotten a few comic books from the 1940s. I've had a whole collection of carded Secret Wars and superpowers. I've had a sealed Hall of Justice come in, a sealed Starship Eternia. And three weeks ago, I had, uh, or I would say a month ago, I had a sealed Pepsi Prime walk through the door. Not to mention, first appearance of Iron Man came in the door. Is that Tales of Suspense? Tales of Suspense. So, quick story on that. Um, guy brings in a box of comics, mostly Westerns, and I'm like, oh, you know, Westerns are tough to sell. I'm digging through it, and I see Amazing Spider-Man number three. I'm like, Rick can sell that book for $500. So, okay. I'm going to sell that book. Listen, sir, uh, I, I only have, this book's, you know, worth $500 in this condition. I got two sixty dollars to tell. Will you take two sixty dollars for the whole box? He's like, no problem. 
So about an hour goes by and I start looking through the box again. And uh, I look at that Spider-Man number three. And it's in a bag. It's in a Ziploc bag. And I, I peel the bag because there was something stuck to the back of it. Wouldn't you know it? Amazing Spider-Man number two. I'm like, oh, no. I start looking in the bag. I'm like, Amazing Spider-Man number six. Oh, no. At the bottom of the box, not in a bag, just sitting loose in perfect condition. First appearance of Iron Man. I looked at the book. I'm like, I know this book. How do I know this book? I start typing it into eBay. eBay auto populates. And I go, oh, no. I have no way of getting a hold of this guy. Otherwise, I'd be like, hey, here's here's extra money that I owe you. And I yeah. feel bad about it. And I'm upset about it. And I wonder, like, if I had known that book was there, like, what would I have given them for it? Anyway, the book went to a very good friend who, let's say, lives in Canada. All right. So, cool. yeah. So that's the story. Uh, has been toys and comics. Bring money. That's, thanks for the commercial, Phil. No problem. No, that is that is a really cool thing, and uh, absolutely one of those deals that is, uh, you know, you, you know, you don't hear about those kinds of stories every day. So when you do hear about it, is it, like when those things come in, it's kind of like, well, where where does it come from? Um, so he told me, look, his his, oh, you know, my son died thirty years ago, and I'm go I'm going into a nursing home. I uh, I want to I want to sell these these books all right okay that's that's where they came from journey into mystery uh 84 was there i missed first appearance of thor by one issue Oy. anyone cool in journey into mystery 84 or is, is that is that uh, post well, first, thor se or second appearance of thor okay. first appearance of jane foster who becomes my door. Right. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Jim. Back back to Tiflet. TFYLP. Not a problem, Jim. I'm gonna add you to the thing here so all the people can see you and hear you, because right, right now they can't. They can see and hear me and Rick, and it just seems like I'm talking to uh, a random thing out there. And uh, I'm sure people are like, what's wrong with Bill? And why did he have a stroke? All right. Hey, Jim. Hi. Long time. I can't see you at all. Oh, how about I? You know, with, with the fine jobs that I work, let alone my curse. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure she probably enjoys that arrangement. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, Jim, you're coming in loud and clear. So we've been uh, kind of talking about Rick's uh, toy and comic shop there and the cool stuff he's got in. Um, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, the topic this evening is. Uh, you know, the new studio series 86 Commander Optimus Prime. And, and uh, that got revealed. I heard, yeah, heard a lot guy. of stuff about it. This, okay. was right. this, this guy? Is that what I, I don't know. It's not him. I don't know who that is, Jim. But that is a neat looking toy there. That's a good one. Nope. God's Xenon from Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, aka Gridman. All right. That's Voltron. It's, it's, it's like. It's Ultraman adjacent. This is Gridman okay. slash Zero, and they, they combine. And it's pretty awesome. There's a that dragon. Fun. But it, it's totally a tribute to Optimus. You can't deny that. No, no, you definitely can't. I mean, it looks almost like more of a Beast Wars head, but that's just. Yeah. But that yeah, with, is with a you, multiverse Optimus. That is. Quite likely. So, with the new series 
186 pound. Um, my question is first, what are your guys' thoughts on it? Um, second, are you going to get it? And then third, do we need another G1 Prime after this? All right. Well, Phil, for, for, for our listeners who don't know what that Optimus is, why don't you break down what this Optimus is based off and what cool things it comes with? So that we, we all know exactly, our audience knows exactly what we're, what we're dealing with here. So the Studio Series 86 line is, uh, as the number entitles, um, toys based on the 86 movie. It's supposed to be screen accurate to the 86 movie. Um, and so this is the first animated Prime. We're getting G1 Prime in the Studio Series 86 line. Um, and so he is... A new, a new mold. Brand new mold. Comes with a trailer. Comes with, uh, you know, obviously the bot himself. He comes with his axe hand. He comes with blast effects. He comes with roller. Uh, his trailer opens up, and you can do all the little fun things of, of standing it up and making a repair bay or lying it down and having a repair bay and, and that sentiment there. So all kinds of fun things you can do with it. Um, and, and it's, it's, you know, going to be commander price tag. So we're looking at 90 bucks as retail for this. Um, a lot of people have, you know, compared it to MP44 in terms of its style and its look. Have which we was, seen a scale compared to an MP? I've not seen a scale compared to the MP. I've seen it scaled to, um, like the Earthrise Prime mold. G1. Um, okay. and then, um, the, the G1, original G1 Prime. So, you know, we've got we just got missing link Optimus Prime. So we have a G1 toy Optimus Prime that moves a lot better. And we've had MP44 yeah, for a while. What's that? The Deluxe and Legacy coming up. We got the Deluxe Legacy. So another G1 Optimus Prime that moves really well. That, and well, and a that's cheaper the G1 option. toy inspired Optimus. Right. Huh. So we're we're getting so we've got missing link. And MP44, which are your Takara versions of Optimus Prime. Missing Link looks exactly like the G1 toy. MP44 is the most screen accurate Optimus that Takara or Hasbro has done. And now we've got mainline versions, i.e. lower price point versions of both of those coming out. So kind of whatever flavor you want of Optimus from his G1 look, whether it's toy, whether it's cartoon... Whether you want the really high end one or you want something that's a little more palatable from a price perspective, I feel like all the bases are covered here. And I'm not 100% sure if we ever need another Prime after this. Here's the thing let me ask, I'm going to throw a question out there for you guys. Yep. Who is the main character of Transformers? Most of the times it's Optimus, sometimes okay. it's B. So let me ask you this who's the main character of star wars you could argue anakin slash vader you could argue okay, luke vader. depending upon which uh yeah right who I was is, say who's, or who's the most important character in uh star trek <clears throat> and you could kirk. you could argue there's two yeah. Yeah. picard kirk yeah. the ship kirk and picard so when you have these legacy brands, you always have to have jumping on points for people. That means there's always going to be an Optimus. There's like there's always going to be a He-Man in every other line, in every other way, right? There's always got to be a skeleton or a Skeletor in every other way, right? There's always got to be an Optimus or a Bumblebee. In, a, in every other way so that you're constantly providing an outlet for someone to purchase the character that defines the brand. And I don't argue that. And so, so what well, this so, ran to grab was reactivate Optimus Prime. This is a really cool Optimus Prime toy, in my opinion. I think underrated. Um, was on sale during Amazon Prime days the last couple days. Um, now, this is very G1 reminiscent, but it's not exactly G1. So I have no I have no illusions that we're done getting Optimus Prime toys. We're getting Optimus Prime toys from Transformers 1. We're going to get more Optimus Prime toys. 
we'll probably right. still get G1 Optimus Prime toys. But my question for you guys is, at what point is it just like there's there's like this curve? And at what point does that curve like pretty much flatten in terms of how much they can improve on a G1 Optimus Prime? I mean, we even have Robeson. So, so we even forgot about Robeson. So we even had Transformers Prime, G1 Optimus Prime, that transforms by itself. So, so what else can we have other than maybe cheaper Robesons that look a little bit better? So should we continue just to produce the same figures for X amount of years? What, what's the argument that you're trying to make? That we should rest the most important character or that we should, A, that we should rest the character for a while and not produce them for a while, which is the most important character. B, continue to produce the same toy for a couple of years like they did in the 80s. Or, or is there a third argument that I'm missing? I think it's more so from you guys as individual collectors. At what point do you feel satisfied with the Optimus Prime toys that you have? All now, right, Rick, so you buy everything. From a general consumer point of view, from a from a collector point of view. Correct. All right. So my what I'll throw out there is: Do you really get tired? And I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Do you get tired? I get of tired Optimus all Prime? the time, Rick. I'll probably fall asleep during this episode. All right. Do you get tired of Optimus Prime, Phil? No. All right. Jim, you get tired of Optimus Prime. On occasion, depending. Uh, if, we're, if we're talking exclusively the G1 aesthetic, like, you know, the, the, the windows in the chest and kind of the blocky look. Fair enough. After a while, Fair it enough. Does, let's, yeah, let's narrow it down. Samey. The G1 yeah. Prime. Well, admittedly, it, even if you go core class or if you go, you know, uh, classics 2006. I mean, just just any, anything of, of that general style that's supposed to be a, a callback to 84. After a while, it does admittedly, I think, get a little samey. Uh, so that's why it's always nice to have something different. Your uh, 2007 Voyager Optimus with the Peter Cullen dude in the, in the driver's seat, or your Armada Optimus, you know, from 02, or, you know, Laser Rod, you know, with the, with like the, the, the shoulder pylon blaster things you know just just change the, the spy changer the spy changer g2 optimus the, the, the little car okay. something different or even you know like that we we saw you know in the 90s with with the advent of beast wars right you know, uh, so it's like a different take on an optimus so you know it, it's like it's supposed to be the same sort of character you know it's the, you know got the faceplate the, the 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 ear horns the leader you know uh Sometimes he's overly stoic. Other times he wants to hang ten or play basketball or talk about. Uh, but we have like a, a Optimus archetype in but terms overall, of his look. Overall, the main G one feel, the, the evergreen as they're calling it, I suppose. After all, it does seem a bit stale. But the fact that they're able to take that and reinvent the wheel again and again in new and more complex ways to basically achieve the same truck to robot is it's astonishing how how it's had such longevity so it's like it, it it's it's the same but it's always interesting every time it's it's fascinating really they keep drawing us in because like okay how does this version of it change the wheels go where it, it, you know it's, it's like what, what's next how are they going to right. Our interest with the same carrot. <laughs> All right, fair, fair enough. Um, for I, I don't know why, but for me, I can excuse Optimus Prime. I can excuse Optimus Prime. I don't know why. Maybe it's because he's the most popular character. Um, I might be a little biased. He's he's my favorite character, but I do love the diversity of characters that we have in Transformers. Mm -hmm. What what I get annoyed with is how many Springers do we need? How many RCs do we need? How many Alita Ones do we need? How many Ultra Magnus do we need? Are these you know top A, top tier characters that we need a constant influx of Springers? That we need a constant influx of sound waves? Optimus? Yeah. He, he's the one kids know Optimus by name. Every kid's going to know Optimus. 
not every kid's going to know Ultra Madness. Not every kid's going to know Soundwave. Mm-hmm. So, Optimus and Bumblebee, I, I can... I'm more forgiving with those. It's like Darth Vader, right? How many Darth Vaders do we need in our collection? How many times can you reinvent the Darth Vader wheel to make the figure exciting? But have it take a shirt off. Wants Darth Vader. Oh, he does Kylo Ren. Same guy. Yeah, and Darth Maul. And then oh, yeah. Chimer, or however you say his name from Acolyte. He, yeah, you know, shirtless figure of him wouldn't hurt. Um, and if he did hurt me, I'd, I'd let him. Um, I mean, I think Rick, I see your point there, and I think you know certainly some characters like RC. We've seen a big uptick in how many we're getting of her. Um, yeah, yeah, but I just think like a dude like Springer. We haven't gotten a ton of Springers. We're about Dude. to get a new one, and it is a heavy remold of, or a remold of one we got. Just like that one was like what four or five years ago at this point. You know, bees and Optimus. We got, the, come out we of got the Wreckers Springer, right? Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That I was kinda, a, that had that was a of toy deck, oh. but the, the the shading was a bit off. So, I somewhat discount that one only because it's just like, all right, you know, you're going to get a repaint. Of most molds, and so I, I don't know. It's like I, I give that one a little more slack, but I, I see where you're coming from. I, I, I think uh, as far as that goes, uh, on on that same point, it's like these are uh, these are well known characters from the earlier years, you know, like like Generation One, for instance, um, that have been brought back periodically over the years, but not often enough to maintain that top tier, top tier status as, say, Starscream or or uh, Prowl or, or you know even Bumblebee or something like that. They like have their main core, you know, six maybe eight ten that they keep reusing. You know, you they, you've got regularly you've got a Grimlock all the time. You've got a Soundwave all the time. You've got Starscream. You've got a Bumblebee. You've got an RC. You know, uh, they've started doing that to Wheeljack here lately, past few years. They used to do it to Prowl in the 2000s. You know, here was a Prowl, there was a Prowl everywhere, a Prowl, Prowl. But uh, I, I don't think a lot of these were given the chance to to maintain that. You know, in, in Season 3, Springer was a main character. He was part of the core, you know, post-movie cast. Um, you know, and for for so many years he he would have like a, a figure every once in a while or one that was like a reference to him but now he's seemingly uh become relevant again i suppose uh ultra magnus uh for you know uh, over a decade we didn't really have anything from that character all of a sudden here comes robots in disguise car robots we have you know god magnus that combines into omega prime then uh, Energon, if you technically want to count that, you got the Overload repaint. That was the the hard to find limited run uh, from uh, from Energon, the, the Armada mold. After that, we get uh, Classics, the Target exclusive. Uh, but now we've got you know Siege, uh, the Walmart damaged one, the uh, the Kingdom one. That's the, the tune ac- more tune accurate. And then now we've got the, the Commander Class of Studio series. Not, and that's not even counting the little spy changers, the the legends class, uh, Optimus repaint, you know, or well, any of the, the MP versions, you know, the Optimus repaints as the, right. the inner, you know, Ultra Magnus. So, so again, let's let's maybe not focus this as so much on Optimus, but maybe talk about second tier characters like Ultra Magnus and Springer. Do you guys feel like you need another G one Ultra Magnus or Springer? based upon the Studio Series ones that they've either are coming out for Springer's case or came out last year in Ultra Magnus's case? No, I, I think what we're running into is what Third Party ran into a couple years ago with Predaking. How many Third Party Predakings do we need? Right? And they're all coming mm-hmm. out. How many Third Party Devastators do we need? Right? And that's funny so, that you bring up Devastator so, because... We're Devastator. What's that, Jim? Some of the first third-party figures uh, were Devastator. 
you go back, you know, 10, 15 years. Yeah, but you know, that, that, that was a different was, landscape. Uh, than what was we it, Hercules? Is, is that what you call that? Hercules? So I think what's interesting, Rick, to your point of bringing up Devastator especially, is that you're right. We got a really saturated marketplace of third-party Devastators for a while, and then it cooled off. But but it started back up again. You know, Fans yep. Toys is doing their Devastator. X Transbots is doing their Devastator. And we're getting another Studio Series mainline Devastator. So, you know, that that is a, a trend that has looped back around. And that, that character's cooled off a little bit in terms of how often we've seen him. But, yeah, that that is... And, and people are salivating over these third-party uh, Devastators that are coming. Yeah, it's like the third-party Dinobots. Everybody was, was doing the Dinobots all of a sudden because we didn't have proper generation equivalents of those characters. Uh, when Masterpiece, yeah. we didn't have proper Masterpiece equivalents of certain characters, so every third-party guy was rushing to get stuff done. So, uh, I'm I'm never going to tire of Optimus, but I do get tired of buying RC again and again and again. I don't know. It's a little different with Optimus because he is the brand. Hmm. So, what improvements could they make? to either MP44, and it's hard to say since we don't have the new Studio Series Optimus, but Studio Series 86 Commander Optimus, what improvements could they make to those to get you to buy that kind of G1 Optimus? Well, let's talk about what they did. We'll be change. excited to buy it. Right? What's, what's the big effect that they added to that Optimus Prime? He's got orange cones that he runs yeah. over. Yes, he's got the orange blast effects that appear for 10 frames in the film because he's got the touch he's got the power yeah she said so it's little it's like the malibu stacy it's malibu stacy yeah but now she's got a new hat oh yeah mm -hmm. yes yes and i mean it's great for kids but as collectors I understand if certain collectors say, yeah, you know what? I got to pass on that one. Or, hey, I got to sell my other one because this one has that one effect that I can make. You know, like, how many death optimists do we need? How many, you know, sleeping primes do we need? You know, I, furthermore, I don't think we need any characters. We don't, we, yeah, I, I don't think we need any dead characters being portrayed in the line. But that's just my opinion. I'm kind of wondering if they'll uh, throw us a curveball using the the new Commander mold, is if they'll do another Studio Series Commander, but it'll be like a final battle prime where he's uh, all damaged and stuff oh, uh, before Jim, he turns. Jim, Jim, Jim. Would... Baby, you know they that's coming. The... You know that's the be a the buzzworthy Bumblebee Here's exclusive. Well, I don't know. Buzzworthy was uh, was was uh, done uh, if I remember right. It'll it'll be uh, I mean the, prime, I'm, prime worthy. That'll be the new marketing campaign. Yes. But MP44 came with the additional parts to give him that battle damage, so you didn't need a second figure. But but yeah, I mean I'm agreeing with Rick. We're gonna likely get a battle damaged Optimus and and you know mid fight Optimus kind right. of thing. Then we'll probably get the dead sleepy optimus, and then we'll probably get the toy color darker blue. Oh, from the two, from the two eyes. Where what one he has an arm and the other one he doesn't. And then I'll tell you what we'll get Dang. after that. Are you ready for this? We're gonna get no, the optimus not ready. Prime my mind, Rick. with the Megatron cannon from the comic book. Yeah. It's yeah. coming. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you that's already in the works over there. I promise you that's already in the works. Somewhere, somehow, we're yeah. getting that off. Almost exclusive. Yeah, I mean, I could see that being a Pulse exclusive. I could see it being a San Diego Comic Con thing next year, since that is the comic yeah. book tie-in. Um, yeah, that's definitely one of those things that you know, it, you just you, this first time I saw it, it's like, how did no one do this before? Yep. 
it's i mean and i don't want to spoil the the comic books for anyone but it's that that whole thing's still going mm -hmm. now now it would be weird to read the comic books without optimus having megatron's arm cannon yeah and i'm sure there's someone out there who did a fan fiction that they already came up with it but i mean in terms of actual published transformers media that's the first yeah uh i'll be honest i thought that was a pretty creative move yeah it's it's you know that's one way to get the fanboys who are on the fence about getting that mold oh it's got the arm cannon from that book that i saw but didn't read oh i gotta have it he's yeah, got, got a the megatron rat. arm from the from the screenshot that my brother sent me that because he reads the comics and, and I don't because comics are for nerds like him. But it's Optimus with Megatron's arm? I That's so weird. I gotta have that. It's like we got chocolate in our peanut butter. You got peanut butter in my chocolate. Sweet Jesus, what have we done? I'm in the coconut. Let me ask, let me ask a harder question. What could they do to that RC mold, to that deluxe RC mold, to get you to buy it again? Make it less parts for me with the backpack. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I feel like that is a toy that that has you know, a decent amount of faults to it. G one toy act. Well, they they could uh, make it in black, right? We haven't gotten the Paradrone Medic in quite some time. Yeah. But then that, now you're talking about using the same mold for a different character, like a you know different paint homage. I think that's a little bit different. I guess I'm just trying to say, like, hey, if we get three years from now, we get a new G1 cartoon, Optimus Prime, what well, has to be different about it than this one to say, all right, I'm going to grab it. Maybe as a collector, it, it, does it matter? Does it matter? Reaper. I'm getting to the point for myself that it somewhat does. But I, I need you to tell me like, a, why. Made of entirely of uh, translucent plastic. I mean, that's that's now you're in like the remold, repaint sort of space, and that's that's kind of different, you know. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm being a stickler on this because I think it is a distinct point. Peter always talks about the idea of incremental improvement, you know, and I'm looking at this from, from the law of diminishing returns. At what point have we reached the point with Optimus Prime and some of these other G1 toys that you just can't do a better job than what is We're, out there right now? You've gotten to God mode? All just right. about, man. What, what about, you know, rubber tires? What about rub signs? What what about going back to doing a brand new die cast G1 Optimus Prime? You know, not not something based off it, you know, a brand brand new Optimus. And see, these are things I, I I appreciate that, Rick, is those are things that would get me to to possibly get a different one, a new one. Like, like, like release uh, the the cab, but with an entirely different trailer. That is the transdector for Master Force. The go go for uh, Gajin Rai. So when it's funny you said that because when we were developing Prime, we had a ton of, and I think some of this has made it online. We had a ton of concept art for alternate trailers. So there was like an underwater trailer. A, you know, the thing would transform and be, it would become a submarine for, like, Bumblebee or something. There was a, a cannon trailer, like a heavy artillery. Uh, there was a space-faring trailer. So... Okay, now I'm just imagining five. Sure, themed trailers. One trailer becomes a mech. One trailer becomes, uh, you know, a submarine. Sure, is that enough? Phil, will that satiate you, Philip? That would be cool. 
And but again, my point, and I'm I'm being a, a d bag stickler on this is what if they release one? Okay, what Optimus if it's the Prime? same toy, different trailer? I mean, if it's a totally new, different trailer, I yeah, I might be down for that. If it if it makes some kind of mech armor for Optimus or makes a submarine, if there's a cool play pattern with it, yeah. Even but though if it's the like cab. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, you give me a new play pattern, and I've got how many of the 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 laser primes, you know, molds do I have because they did a Toxitron or they did a Scourge? Oh, you know, you're you, you make some difference. You're right. You're right. Um, I'm but, talking about releasing yeah, the same like, cab in a with same colors, just a dip. One trailer goes to Walmart, one goes to Target, one goes to Amazon. The other is a post exclusive. If it's a whole new play pattern, then yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably be in for that. If it's if it's a brand new cab and a brand new trailer, but meant to be, this is even more accurate to G one. That's where I feel like I would quite possibly say no, unless Rick, to your point, ahead, rub signs or rubber tires or or die cast something something to give it a distinct you know difference between this one that we're about to get because i mean we're already doing uh, loads of you know accessories blast effects you got the axe mm -hmm. uh, not to mention uh so, something i i was kind of wondering about with this release and with, with, with 86 it's supposed to be movie accurate right yeah it's a roller and it's got the the maintenance drone well Over i mean the movie uh, it, I mean, yeah, I, I understand, but on Prime, sure, but they weren't in the G one movie. So, so when you get this, Jim, you can send that to Hasbro, and send it back to them, and say thank you, but no thank you, sirs <laughs> and madams. I oh, think... no, I, 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 thought it, I thought it was an interesting choice. I mean, that'd be like including you know in, in like eighty six Jazz and and some of them the the, the water skis. Although I guess t uh, Cliff Jumper technically did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cliff Jumper Cliff did. Jumper did. All right, let me let me throw a different. Let me throw a completely different idea. This is based off something that we uh, we toyed around with at Hasbro for an anniversary. We were thinking, all right, what if we let different artists do different uh, box art? And then we leave a little white space for the artist to sign it at conventions. Like, this is the Rob Liefeld box art for this character, for Sunstreaker. Oh, this is the I, Alex Ross box art for Megatron. So we toy around with doing something like that. All right. What if we say, this is a brand new toy. It's a brand new G1. G1 inspired Optimus. But this one, this one's designed by... McFarlane. This one's de designed by Rob Liefeld. This one's designed by Jim Lee. I mean, if it was designed by Rob Liefeld, it wouldn't have any feet and it couldn't stand. So I would probably pass it up. <laughs> um, but but yeah, you, you, now you're talking about something that will be different and will be aesthetically different because it's designed by those guys. So I guess okay. another question I, I have. Designed by Todd McFarlane. Right, and it's going to have, like, you know, the spaghetti spider. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the, the Todd um, McFarlane and, one can't hold its weapon. And it can't right, and it's gonna, his, his, his antenna are going to be so pointy, it's going to take out a kid's eye. Yeah, it looks better um, in the package, but once you open it, it's a piece of crap. Yeah, it's got, like, three points of articulation, and it can really only hold one pose. Right, and it doesn't um, quite transform. It just kind of right. leans over. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so let me let me frame it this way. Do both of you have MP44? Yes. Nope. Well, I do. Okay. Okay. So this is all right. So 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 Jim, if you had MP44, would you still want to get this toy? Most likely, because as you can okay. see behind me, I am going for all of Studio Series as best I can. Okay. So yes. Okay. I mean, obviously, if I had MP44, I, I'd still be probably buying this as well. So that's. Well, yeah, you're asking about a toy that's from two different lines. 
That's like, yeah. hey, I have the Legion class Optimus. Since you have the Legion class, are you interested in getting the Commander class? Yes. You know, that's, I don't know if that's a valid question. No, that's fair. But I can see people saying, listen, I got MP44, best Optimus Prime ever made. You can't top it. Why should I spend 90 bucks on this other guy when I have the cream of the crop? Scale be damned. Line be damned. I've got the best G1 Optimus out there. I'm done. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting conundrum. Uh, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask this question because... Uh, well, Rick, it's been fun talking to you tonight. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, I'm kidding. I'm a very different collector than most people. Because I am extreme in my collecting. That's the only way to describe it. I am extreme in my collecting. Be it, be it hey, I need to have all 500 covers of Transformers number one. Or, hey, I need to have all the prints from the UK of, from this particular art studio. Or, hey, uh, I'm really looking for all the uh, pencil sets from Greece. You know, I'm... So quick aside here, Rick, did you did you track down the GameStop Transformers uh, number one cover yet? There's a GameStop? Mm -hmm. I don't say this with um, any hatred in my heart for the brand or for the licensing team or for Skybound. But I'm fucking done buying Transformers number one. And the GameStop one, the reason I ask if you found it is like it's it's not easy to come by. Not every store is getting it. And in order to get it, you need to buy so much Transformers merchandise to then get it. And most I, like the GameStops by me, I don't know if I've ever even seen them carry Transformers for the most part. I'm fucking now, done. maybe online is an option. I haven't researched that as much. I, I'm fucking done buying Transformers number one. I have as as I I don't know what I have more of at this point. Sweeps or Transformers number one? I I, I don't know. I am I I hey, you know what? Someone out there has the whole collection of number one. I'm glad someone does. Have you gone after every version of every cover? So you have like like the Scotty Young version, for instance. No. His cover. No, I mean, there's... Then there's the Virgin without the logo, and then there's the, the white version where there's no background, and it's just Optimus. I have honestly lost count of how many covers I have for number one. I have... I, between the Black Saber comics and the incentives and this store, and, and then this artist has one exclusive through this weird website that you have to, like, paypal someone in north korea to get it it's i am done if another one comes my way and i don't have it great but i'm not going out of my way anymore for any more exclusive covers for number one through seven i'm done you you beat me congratulations hasbro Congratulations, Skybound. Well done, Transformers brand. You beat one of your most excessive collectors into the ground. I, I find it very amusing that I have, I think, been like firsthand witness to seeing both, not both, but seeing all Peter, Rick, and, and Nick be broken. May whatever God you believe in bless capitalism. Because uh, even if funds were unlimited, I wouldn't give a damn. What would be the point? It's not going to make my thing any bigger. It's not going to make my kids love me. It's not going to make my poo come out any softer. It doesn't matter anymore. And there's only one other time in history that this has happened to me. 
back when Armada was coming out, there was a ton of variants on Armada Rhinox. I have 13 different carded Armada Rhinoxes. I remember one time I found a 14th variation in the store that I've never seen since. I looked at it and I said, no. And I hung it back up on the peg and I walked away. And I don't regret it. I've got like 11 carded deluxe Armada Optimus Primes. I'm done. I am done. So yeah, I'm going to buy that new Optimus Prime. And when they painted them black, yeah, I'll buy that. I'll buy two of those too. One to keep sealed and one to open. And when they dead Optimus Prime, I'll buy that too. And when they repackage it with a new exclusive cover to number one, damn it, Phil, I'm going to buy that too. Because I'm an addict. I just realized we missed one. They can release it as a G2 variant. Oh. There's another trailer. I'm done. There. I'm done. Well, folks, you, you saw it here. Um, Rick just just broke. Um, like I said, we've, we've seen Nick break. We've seen Peter break. Robeson broke Nick. Peter was more of a gradual breaking, but this uh, Skybound and Robert Kirkman and Daniel Warren Johnson broke Rick. Um, and Rhinox, for that matter. Um, I had no idea there were so many variants of Rhinox, though. I, I didn't know. It's, I it's not so much the toy, it's the packaging. There are some variants on the toys, but it's like, man, there's a ton of variants on the mini cons too, and I, mm. there's so many of them out there. I just, there's so many variants on the RID train bots. Uh, God. God, are we man. talking like, like like standard and trilingual and and then different colored yeah. windows, clear windows, painted windows, translucent uh, windows? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh. So, Rick, I think I think what you're hitting at is a tipping point that I could see other collectors getting too much sooner. Oh, god damn you, Phil! I hate you now. You know why? Because you basically made me into everybody else. I mean, you're still special to me. Damn. Uh. Curses. Curses. I think this was your plan all along. It was not. It was not. I'm just sitting here. I'm just, Rick, I'm just asking questions. I'm just, I'm not trying to say or do anything. I'm just asking questions. Jim, do you have a tipping point that if you get this, and assuming you're going to get this Commander Studio Series Optimus Prime, would you feel like you would need to get three years from now another G1 Optimus Prime that was a new mold? but directly meant to homage or be G1 Optimus, but slightly more accurate? That would depend uh, on, uh, on on what that figure has has to offer. It'd be, you know, be it accessories, transformation. Uh, if they include any sort of uh, decals or, or die-cast metal for one, whatever reason. I mean, there's, there's so many factors. Um, like I, I, I see myself, of course, getting the '86 Optimus. I see myself getting the upcoming Legacy Deluxe because I, just, I I've actually adored the the toy aesthetic uh, outside of just 
you know, having, you know, the toys, you know, years ago, just the, the, the blocky feel that the cartoon itself didn't have that the toys did. Now, and did you buy Missing Link, Optimus? I did not because I am a uh, person on a limited income that uh, works full time and does not have many, many, many monies for uh, the more pricey things. And, and, and no, uh, no, no question about that. No, no shame. Nothing about that. If if you had already Missing Link Optimus, would you feel the need to buy the G One Mainline Optimus? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The, well, they're the, very the different aesthetics. I haven't gotten either, and I don't have a desire to get they're, either. They're, so. they're both based on the G One toy, are they not? Yeah, yes. but they're totally different aesthetics. They're totally different. That's like saying, hey, I want the sideshow Darth Vader versus the Black Series Darth Vader. They're totally I, I different I understand. designs. But I, I, I get that, but the Legacy Deluxe I'm viewing as a simplified means to achieve the same overall end in that you have a G1 toy looking robot to a G1 toy looking cat. It's just not nowhere near as complex. It doesn't have as many parts. It's not as articulate or, or whatever else. You know what I mean? It might have holes, like five millimeter holes in the fist instead of individual fingers. Things of that nature. Light piping, no light piping. I don't know. Electronics. But uh, I think they're, they're distinct enough while, while having the, the same overall feel to, uh, to warrant a lot of folks buying both. Hmm. Semantics, I think. Yeah. But, uh, you know, with, with, with this aspect of 86, though, you know, and, and them, them doing an Optimus, you know, especially so soon after doing, you know, Earthrise and, and then, you know, more recently we've got all these other different Optimuses like the Target one and the, the Santa Claus one and all these others. Uh, it has me wondering, you know, what other items are they going to be uh, putting out in the 86 sub line while Studio Series, the, the main aspect of Studio Series has moved on 30 plus figures beyond the number 86, not to mention the World for Cybertron game series. And, uh, and what was the other, the, uh, John the blank here. Uh, the, oh, the, uh, the reaction, the, the, right? It, it, that's no, Reactivate wasn't part of the Studio Series line. Uh, one of my, you know, uh, was it was it Transformers One? Is that what is that it? Maybe does that get its own numbering? I, I haven't paid attention that's to the packaging. Like, I don't know. I I, I know, I know the game know. series does the the game series with like Barricade and you know uh, everybody else from the, right. From the yeah. game. and then eighty six also has its own numbering. Right, right, eighty six. Mm -hmm. 01, 86, 07, mm -hmm. or whatever. It was just, and, and it's unique to strictly the 86 movie. And I'm wondering, are we eventually going to see a core class, you know, Kranix, you know, from Lithone? Are we going to see an 86 Unicron? I mean, it wouldn't be in scale, I'm sure. You know, it would be like, like a simplified thing. Or maybe just the head. We just release the head that transforms into God knows what. That could be fun. Have, have, have the Unicron planet just turn into his own head. <laughs> technically, technically God damn accurate. You, Jim. You, just, you just told them what to do. I know, right? I mean, I think the 86 line still has a lot of life to it, still has a lot of legs to it. I think it's interesting when you look at the fact that Springer came out in Earthrise and now they've updated him to come out in Studio Series, will we see the same thing with the Cyclonus? The, the Kingdom Cyclonus, will we see a new one of that in updated for the 86 line? Heck, they could do the, the ships. They could do the, the Autobot City shuttles and they could do the uh, the Zepticon warship from Unicron, the Galvatron. Yeah. You know, the, the, the Autobot shuttles could separate. Mm-hmm. 
you know, so they could detonate three quarters of the ship, and you could have a pack with all sorts of blast effects. <laughs> that that what was it? Lemon tree, purple potato. I think was a third party toy name of the the shock wave that turns into Galvatron ship. That is a really fun toy. It's such a pain in the rear to transform, but yeah. boy, howdy, does it look good in the Decepticon ship mode. So, um... Quintessence. We don't have the Quintessence. We've got Quintessence from the, what was it? Was it Kingdom Earth or was that Earthrise? But, but yeah, Earth I Earth can Earth see them redoing that to Maybe. make it more accurate. They could do the Judge. They could do the, the Bailiff. They could do all, you know. Yeah. Right, the Stenographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got to do the stenographer. The bailiff, yeah, the stenographer, the um, the clerk, the court clerk. The intern. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. There'd be an excuse to have him do a Star Trek crossover, just bring in Brent Spiner and just have, have it turn into a quest song. A little, little night court nod for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I got you once you said the night court reference, but it took me a asleep. second. I'm half asleep, forgive me. I work mornings. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, interesting. Um, interesting. Yes. Some point of views I certainly had not considered. And I at first thought this topic was folly, but it has been most welcomed. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't buy it. I'm not trying to say you're a horrible, evil person if you want to buy another Optimus. I'm not trying to say that you're a crappy collector if you don't buy another Optimus. I just feel like it's, it's, it's again, the kind of the law of diminishing returns. And at what point do we just reach that saturation point with, with Optimus where it's just, and just don't feel like I'm getting enough of improvement. I think, Rick, you brought up some cool stuff that would be a differentiator that if they made another G1 that I'd probably want to go and get it between like the, the die cast, the rubber tires, that sort of thing. Hmm. I like that trailer idea. Yeah. They can release a pulse exclusive variant of the 86 prime. The only difference would be that it includes a decal for the grill that has thrust on it. I'd probably freaking buy that too. Oh God, I'm an idiot. God damn you, Jim. That's a toy hack. That's a toy hack sticker set right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I'm such a mark for that shit. Wow. They would actually come with three different stickers, like zooming in. Yeah. Yeah. And you can decide how close Optimus is to thrust. Oh no, it's the uh what what's the uh Oh, they, they did it like like the sticker books and stuff when we were kids. It's like where you you turn the page and, it, and it's like it has the what's that called? Where it like shows lenticular motion. Yeah, yeah, lenticular. Yeah, that could be a, a, a sticker. Oh. Awesome. All right. Well, interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right. Well, with that, gentlemen, any final thoughts? Mr. Jim, final comments, observations? Since they've insisted on doing the 86 movie, and so far, most of the characters from that film, will they attempt in some form or another some kind of Megatron. I just realized how they could release this Optimus. They can release it in the Return of Optimus Prime box, where the box just, it's the same toy in the same colors, <laughs> but there's a little cardboard cutout of a Quintesson on one side and a little cardboard cut out of Skyling's head. And the Optimus comes in robot mode and it just lights up in the back. That's it. That's it. And all little, of us marks would bubble. buy it. Little, little speech bubble next to the Quintesson. It was an accident. Nothing, nothing in the <laughs> universe can stop me. And then there'd be Cup, you turn the box around and it's Cup and he's like, hey, shit box. 
<laughs> and that's exactly who you are. <laughs> I mean, Jim, to your question, I mean, there's been the hay plague virus, though. Hey, they did do the pork chop sandwiches, GI Joe figures. So yeah, anything possible. Was Super Seven, so, right? Yeah, no, I think really? we should give Super Seven some credit then for including a surfboard and a basketball with their Optimus. Yeah, they went deep, deep, deep on those cuts, and look how healthy that line is. That now, if they're going to cut. Uh, ob obscure things like that, they're going to have to include boobies. Because he, he, he said it himself, that he was impressed by a booby trap that actually catches boobies. I think uh, we need a... They're going to retool the exosuit Spike into the um, episode where Spike was wearing the football gear and he had Spike written across the front of the football jersey. Oh, or just, or just re reissue the same toy, but as Daniel, with no changes at all. Just a different same box. Head. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just Spaniel. reissue it as, um, as the mom, too. It's the same face, just painted blonde. Mm -hmm. Did she ever wear the suit? Carly? I don't know if Carly ever wore the suit, but it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. She did. Nothing matters. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, Philberto, final thoughts before we wrap it up? Um, I will say, uh, one of my buddies who buys maybe one Transformer every 10 years asked me to, to get a hold of the Studio Series 86 Prime for him. So, so casual Transformer fans are, uh, are taking notice of this and, and are interested. Ah, huh. interesting, interesting. Um, Jimmy struck something there. Will we ever get a 86 Megatron? And if so... Oh. I'm but thinking... with our luck, it'll be just another reissue of you know who. Mm. That's right, Combiner War it... Silverbolt. Yes, but if they do attempt it in any way, I'm thinking they will probably do it in such a way where it will not have the arm cannon because remember that got that got knocked away during the battle. It'll be a Megatron that's beat all to hell, all damaged. Uh, and unable to transform because of the damage. And the box but will be... Have... The box will look like Astro Train's door, and there'll be a cardboard right. cutout of Starscream holding him. And, and he could he could still have the little, uh, the little uh, lightsaber, whatever that was that he grabbed, and the little purple blaster that he had pointed at Hot Rod. Right, right. And, and it, the tech spec will say... If they included a tech spec, which we all know they don't, it would say I still function. Oh, please, please. Ah. It's the I, that's what they call it. I still function Megatron. Do a, Functional do a, Megatron. Uh, a two pack with Starscream, and Megatron could be the accessory as he's being Funct dumped out of Master Train. Functioning Megatron. Yes. All right. Well, that was. Uh, it, he could be a riveting. Specs. Yeah, that was a more riveting conversation that I was ready for. So well done to the two of you. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us tonight. Again, for those of you uh, who are watching, please like, please subscribe, uh, please follow, please please tell your friends. Please um, uh, take a moment to uh, register to vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for, just saying voting's important. And uh, as always, please send us pictures of your feet. And also, please well, add your comments as to, you know, what you think about G1 Optimus Prime and, and how many do you need and what's your tipping point. So, uh, book club coming up on Sunday. Uh, so, join in with that. I think they're still wrapping up the IDW run. And, uh, yeah, gentlemen, have a fantastic